Good afternoon, everybody. It's time to talk about one of the most discussed Seahawks of the last few days. I think ever since that Carolina game ended, this has been one of the Seahawks that is at the forefront of people's minds. And this is one of the few guys who's on the forefront of people's minds in a negative way. This is one of the guys who people are actually concerned about. And I don't think it's so much the player, although there's a little bit of that going on. It's about the production. I'm talking, of course, about Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. He has not lived up to the training camp, preseason, offseason hype yet. We are three games in. And here's what we've gotten out of JSN thus far. All of nine catches on 14 targets for 57 yards, and only two of those receptions have gone for first downs. You put it all together, and it's a pretty lackluster set of numbers for a player that people were expecting big things from. There was a ton of hype from the um, training camp portion of the offseason. People were like, this guy's really special. This guy's going to make an immediate huge impact on the team. And we haven't seen that yet, so if you pay attention to Seahawks circles, you've probably seen the people start to wonder, like, what's going on here? Why isn't this guy producing? Why isn't this guy doing what people told us he would do? What's going on here with JSN? And I want to talk about a few things here. So, first of all, I want to say I think this is definitely getting way overblown. I think this JSN stuff is getting way overblown. There's a very clear and obvious reason why JSN hasn't been able to go off the way that some people were expecting before the season started. And I'll say this. I kind of expected JSN to do more than this in the first three games. I expected JSN to be a bigger part of the offense. But a big part of the problem is very obvious, and I feel like people are losing track of that. This is not the offense we thought we were going to be running in 2023. It's just not. We had to change things, guys. Charles Cross and Abe Lucas basically played a half. They played a little bit more than a half, I think, and then they were out. And we saw what happened at the end of that Rams game. We couldn't maintain any kind of a pocket. Gino had no time, no opportunity to do anything whatsoever because we had our backup tackles in there. That was us trying to use the same game plan with those tackles. Couldn't do it. So these last two games, we've had to move to a different kind of offense. And that's why you see, if you scroll down here a little bit, you can see JSN has been on the field for barely over half the offensive snaps, 52%, 103 total. That's a lot less than we were probably planning to have them. We got to get more tight ends out there right now, guys. It, It just is what it is. So I feel like that's a fairly obvious thing to say here. It's, it's a very simple process. When you have multiple tight ends on the game, JSN kind of can't be out there. It's really hard to get JSN out there when you have two tight ends in the game. Honestly, it can be hard when you only have one tight end sometimes because sometimes you might have three receivers, but you want one of them to be Jake Bobo because of his run blocking. And obviously JSN will never be anywhere near the run blocker Bobo is, and he's proven to be such an asset in that area beyond anyone's wildest dreams, I think, that you have to get him out there some when you're running the ball. So you add all these little things up, JSN is losing snaps. So some people are going to say, well, 103 snaps is still enough. There still should be some more production here. And yeah, okay, that's true. But let's think about this from a different angle. And this is an angle maybe I didn't pay enough attention to in the offseason. I didn't think enough of. Geno Smith has been playing with the other guys on this offense for a much longer time than he's been playing with JSN. Um, He's been playing with Metcalf and Lockett for technically years because he's been here for years. But if you want to say as a starter, he's been playing with those guys for a full season. Both those guys had a thousand yards last year. He's familiar with playing with Fant and Disley and Parkinson. He's got a year under his belt playing with a guy like K-9. A guy like JSN who just got here... There isn't going to be that report and relationship that um, Gino Gino has with guys who have been here for at least the last year. So I do think that's also part of it. You, You see these plays. You see these plays where JSN gets open and Gino never looks at him. 
the the other element going on here is because the offensive line is so beat up where we're missing two starters, three starters, at some points four starters, we we can't go through progressions. So Gino drops back, looks, throws it to the first guy, open guy he sees because he knows he doesn't have time. He's got to make one read and then throw it or just kind of start improvising. He doesn't have time to go through the progressions to find JSN because JSN is usually not going to be the first read. And just in general, there's a lot going on on this offense right now. There's going to be somebody who gets left out a little bit just because there's only one football and there are only so many plays to run in a in a game. Like you've got K9 who's on pace for almost, what, 1,600, 1,700 yards. Charbonnet is now on pace to do some pretty big stuff this year. DK's on pace to have maybe his best season ever. You, uh, the tight ends doing what they're doing. All three tight ends have been meaningful in the passing game. And then you've still got Lockett, who's gotten off to a little bit of a slower start this year, but we know he's going to do stuff. There's only one ball here, and with some of the stuff that's going on with this running game being, according to EPA, the most effective running game in the NFL, there just may not be enough footballs to go around to get to JSN, especially if we're going to use tight ends. Maybe we found something over the last couple weeks to where we're just going to have to embrace our identity as a heavy tight end using team, and if that comes at the expense of JSN's rookie season a little bit, then so be it. We're trying to win games here. We're trying to score points. We're not trying to feed anybody's fantasy stats. We're not trying to win rookie of the year here. We're not doing any of that. We're, we're trying to win games and score points. And that's kind of the uh, crux of this here. That's why I don't understand why this is such a big deal to some people, because this Seahawks offense, in case you guys haven't noticed, is good. It's really good. It's great. It's elite. It is. You go to ESPN right now. Go pull up points per game. Seahawks at 29. Only three teams are ahead of the Seahawks in points per game. In yards, I know that they're near the middle. They're like 16th or 17th or something like that. But what would you rather have, yards or points? That just tells me we're super efficient. We're avoiding turnovers. We're cashing in on most of our good drives. And that you get what you get. By the way, if Jason Myers hits one of the three field goals he missed, we're ahead of Frisco. If he hits two of them, we're ahead of Buffalo, meaning we'd be second. So it's not like we're sitting here wondering why this offense isn't playing well and we're just looking f for some reason why we're not scoring. We're scoring. We're scoring, guys. 29 points a game is no joke. I know it's early, but... For every team in the league, it's early. And we have more points than every team except for three. And one of those teams is just completely off the charts crazy right now. So that's the kind of, that's the thing that I don't understand. Yes, we're not using JSN as much as we thought, but what we are doing is working. And it's working with a bunch of backups on the offensive line. That's kind of incredible. I'm trying to get hyped over that. I'm trying to get super excited about the fact that this team found a game plan that didn't allow the team to get sunk by a bunch of injuries. We've won two games, put up significant pointage in both games. What was it, 37 in both games? Despite the fact that we were starting two backups at tackle, one game we were starting a backup at guard, we've basically been lights out on offense in five of the six halves we played. That one bad half was bad, but we all know why it was bad. So... At the end of the day, what we are doing is working extremely well. It's not just working a little bit. It's working to an extremely high level. And the final thing I want to say here is that JSN is doing stuff. I, I, I know this tweet is from NFL Rookie Watch, and I know NFL Rookie Watch is, you know, if, if you know, you know. But this stat has been verified by other sources, so it, it's real. JSN is averaging 4.6 yards of separation on every route he's ran so far this season, second best among all receivers and fourth best in the entire league. So he's doing his job. If he continues to get open like this, the balls will come. If he continues to get open like this, the balls are going to come. Don't even sweat it. Don't even worry about it. He's doing his thing. So to the few people out there who are looking at JSN and going, Eh, maybe he wasn't any good. Maybe he's just not a very good player. He, he's not. He's too slow. He can't get open. No, he's getting open. He is getting open. He can catch the ball. He can run routes. He. This is 
absolutely something that he can do at a high level. We have every reason to believe it. It just hasn't translated to numbers yet. And there are quite a few reasons why that is. And you also have to realize his presence on the football field draws defensive attention because every team in the league is scared of JSN when they play the Seahawks. Even though he hasn't gone off yet, they're aware of what he does and what he can do. So JSN, you could give him some credit for DK Metcalf's big start to the season so far. You could give him some credit for some of the stuff going on with the tight ends too in, in some roundabout way, potentially. I will say this. I will say this, though, to kind of throw a little bit of something to the people who are concerned about this. Here's what I will say, just to wrap this video up. The Seahawks, the one area on offense where they're actually bad, the one notable area, is on third down. If you look at third down conversion percentage so far through this season, 2023, we're near the bottom, 28th, 30%. We're not converting third downs. Um, this is difficult to sustain. Let's put it that way. If we continue to be at the bottom of the league in third down conversion percentage, I don't think our offense is going to stay at the top. The big draw of getting JSN on your team is that he's a guy who gets open and catches passes on third down. A big part of JSN being valuable in this league is what he does on third down. So, I would like to see JSN get incorporated more so we can start to solve this. But in order to do that, we need to sort out the offensive line first. And we need to be in a situation where we won't just get bum-rushed on, on every third down because teams know we're going to pass and they just blow past our um, offensive tackles because they're backups. So it's coming. And I will admit, I think when JSN comes along, this can get fixed. And it has to get fixed. But I think people are kind of getting a little too lost in the fantasy football side of things, personally. I just look at this. I look at some of the people who are concerned about JSN's production so far. It strikes me partially motivated by people who play fantasy football and have him in fantasy and want him to do better because they're losing in fantasy. I don't know. It, there's just something going on there that makes me think of that. Because, again, this team is scoring. This team has scored 37 points in the last two games. This team is averaging 29 points a game, even though they played an entire half and did nothing. So things are working on this offense. Things are working as good as we've ever seen them, really. Th this is the best this offense has looked since 2020, the first five or six games when Wilson looked like he was going to run away with MVP. Um, this is, may if not that, then you'd have to go all the way back to 2015. So you can focus on the JSN side of things where he's been a little bit of a disappointment so far, or you can realize that what the team is doing is necessary and it's also really, really impressive. And it's led to a couple of wins, so I don't know. We're going to have to have a little bit of patience here. I believe that JSN will be fine. Remember, he's very young, too, and he only had one year of production in college football. Maybe he does take a year before he becomes a big-time player. That's possible. For all we know, JSN's time as a top NFL receiver won't start until 2024 because he just needs this year to get his feet wet. Maybe. But he's doing some things right. He's doing some very important things right. And I'm inclined to believe that once we sort out the offensive line issue so Geno can actually go through reads, without having Max Protect in, and JSN's on the field more, it's going to come. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Just wanted to talk for a little while about JSN, because this is a situation that a lot of Seahawks fans are expressing some concern about. So I, I, I want to put a lot of it to bed. And I also do want to acknowledge the fact that this is not okay. This is why you got JSN. So go do something with it. All right, see y'all later. Go Hawks.